Hiya folks. Unless you've been living under a rock or traveling off planet or something like that for the last year, you're probably aware that AI, or more specifically generative AI, has become quite the buzz recently. Things like ChatGPT and Google Bard have brought generative AI to the masses, and it seems that everyone is dreaming and scheming of how they can leverage AI in their projects and, and even in their day-to-day -day life. If you're a Spring developer, you might be wondering how you can implement generative AI in your Spring applications. If so, then this video is for you. I'm going to introduce you to Spring AI, a relatively new project that enables generative AI in Spring Boot. It's so new, in fact, that I'll be working with a 002 snapshot in this video. It's very much still pre-beta. Uh, so it means there's a lot of, there may be some rough edges. Uh, it, but it works really well for what it does right now. It actually works very well. Um, in fact, it works with OpenAI and Azure OpenAI at the moment, but this will likely uh, change and it will likely interact with other generative AI APIs in the future. And suffice it to say, it's kind of awesome. So I'm not going to make you wait any longer. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, to get started with Spring AI. I'm going to start by creating a brand new project here in IntelliJ. We're going to call it um, Songs API. All right, so I'm going to create a Songs API. I am going to use Maven, uh, no particular reason, other than I just feel comfortable using Maven more when people are watching me, even if it's a pre-recorded video. I am going to change the group to Habuma, but I'll leave everything else alone. Everything else seems fine. I'm going to add just a simple uh, Spring Web dependency to my build. I am also going to add dev tools to my build, but there is no checkbox yet for Spring AI. Spring AI is still new, so new it, does, it doesn't show up in start.spring.io. So I'm going to just add those two dependencies and we'll call it good. Should be good enough. We'll get the project started. I'm going to make this window a little bit bigger so we can see everything. I won't have to scroll around as much. I'm going to close help. I'm going to make one quick adjustment to my compiler so that it will build automatically when I make changes, which means that DevTools is going to be able to, um, it's under compiler actually, uh, DevTools is going to be able to automatically restart my application when I make any changes. That's going to just save us a little trouble of having to go up here and click a little button. All right, with that said, we're ready to roll. Um, now I said that Spring AI is so new, it does not yet have a checkbox in start.spring Io. So we're going to have to add it, but it's still a snapshot build that we'll be using. So the first thing we can do before we add it is we need to add our snapshot repositories. So snapshot repositories, um, let's see, uh, repository, cool. And then we're going to have ID spring snapshot. It looks like uh, Copilot was uh, suggesting something. So uh, maybe I should have kept it. Uh, we'll just see. We'll go ahead and keep going until it tells me that it's something I don't like, but that looks good so far. And uh, do we want snapshots enabled? Absolutely, we do. And that's good. That's what we'll. That's what we we'll use. That actually, I think, is what I need. All right. With that said, again, sometimes I rely on on Copilot to do things, and I trust it. And then I find out later on it did something I, that had I been paying a closer bit of attention, I would have not done. But I think that's right. Now we're going to add our dependency. So I'm going to say dependency. And the dependency specifically that we're going to add is Spring AI. And we have two choices here. We can either use just good old fashioned open AI or we can use Azure open AI. But I'm just going to use good old fashioned open AI uh, Spring Boot Starter. And that's going to suggest org.springframework.experimental.ai, which is what I want. And it's going to also suggest a version. I'm going to add 0.2.0 snapshot. Very good. All right, with that said, we have all the pieces in place dependency-wise, so we're going to actually start, start working with it now. Oh, actually, there is one other thing we have to do. There is one other small kind of important thing we have to do. You need to go set your OpenAI API key somewhere. Now, I'm using OpenAI, and I am going to use an... AI key, an open AI key um, that uh, is mine. I don't want you to use it, but I'll show you where to set it. If you come over here and go to source main resources, go to application properties, you can say spring.ai.openai.api key equal, 
And then whatever your API key is, go. you're going to need to go to OpenAI, register, get yourself an API key and use it. Now, I'm not going to show you typing my OpenAI API key here. Instead, I'm going to go set it as an environment variable, which is going to let me do this. I'm going to go, go pull in OpenAI API key. That way I'm not hard coding it in any of the code that I might check into GitHub. Not that I'm necessarily going to check this into GitHub, but if I did, I wouldn't be hard coding my OpenAI API key and then checking it into, into a public GitHub repository. So I'm just going to reference this environment variable, and I will set that environment variable separately. All right. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and close this. And now we're ready to start writing some code. So I'm going to do a really simple thing. I'm going to come up here to Java, and I'm going to go to the Java folder, that is. I'm going to go ahead and add a new class, a Java class. And we're going to call it Songs Controller. It's going to be a class just like any other uh, REST controller would be. I'm going to annotate it with REST controller. I'm going to put a request mapping of slash songs on it. That's going to be the base path for all the requests that this is going to handle. And then I'm going to inject into it via, via its constructor. I'm going to in, inject into it, not a song repository. Uh, clearly, Copilot has no idea what I'm about to do. I'm going to inject an AI client. So AI, oops, AI client. I'm going to assign that to a instance variable. I'm going to go ahead and go and create that field. Cool. We have that there now. And we're ready to start using it. Let's see. I'm going to handle a simple git request. So git mapping for slash top song. Not a very useful uh, example that I'm creating to start off here, but it's going to give us something to start to kind of work with. I'm going to say string, I'm going to call it the top song method, and I'm going to ask OpenAI this question. I'm going to say, oops, what was the billboard number one year end top 100 single for 1980. Anybody want to guess what that is? Maybe you know already. Don't Google it. That's cheating. We're going to find out in a minute anyway. We're going to ask OpenAI to tell us that. And I'm going to return the answer. AI client dot generate. That's the method we're going to pass in because ultimately what generation means is you can kind of think of how this AI stuff works, this generative AI stuff works by thinking about it in terms of something that you've probably seen before on your phone when you're typing a text to someone or typing something and it's offering you a recommendation of what the next thing is you're going to type. The, the basically auto completion, the suggestions, it's going to offer those things to you. And it's, but it's a little bit kind of written large, if you will, rather than suggesting what a word should be based on the context of what you've typed already, this is going to suggest the next thing that it thinks should follow after whatever the prompt is. Now in this case the prompt is a question but the prompt could also be you know uh, a command such as create something or or produce something or or imagine something and then what this is going to do is based on that context based on that prompt it is going to generate what it cons considers a completion for that prompt. So in this case the the, the prompt is a question and so it considers the completion and answer to that question. So what was the billboard number one year in top 100 single for 1980? To complete that prompt, we're going to ask it to generate an answer. We're going to say generate given that prompt and it's going to generate an answer. So let's go ahead and kick this off. Let's go ahead and fire it up. I'm going to pull over a window to poke at this with. I'm going to make the font a little bit bigger and we're going to use HTTP IE. If you're not familiar with what HTTP IE is, it's kind of like curl, but a little bit easier to work with. It, among other things, it defaults to localhost, so I don't have to specify localhost. I can also uh, do other cool things with it. It assumes JSON output by default rather than um, anything else, and likewise for input. So it's just easy to work with. But I'm going to say songs slash top song. I think that's what my path was. Let's double check before I hit enter. And yes, it looks like that's correct. And it's going to say, wait for it, the billboard number one year in top 100 single for 1980 was Call Me by Blondie. Everybody likes that song. Apparently in 1980 they did. Uh, so there we go. It worked. That's the simplest thing we can possibly do to add generative AI to our Spring application is just simply give it a prompt and have it do a generation against that prompt. Now another thing that you can do is we don't necessarily have to give it a string prompt directly. We can also give it 
a, a richer object called an AI prompt, but we're not going to do that in this video. That's a more advanced topic. The, the key benefit of doing that way is you also get back a, a response a, as an object, not as just another string. What you'll get back is um, something called, you give it a prompt object and you get back an AI response object as your output, and the AI response out, uh, object has with it some additional metadata, some metrics around the usage. And this is a good, a good thing to know because ultimately this is not free. When you're using an open AI, it's not free. It's going to charge you for use based on how many tokens you use. If I were sending it a prompt and getting back an AI response, the AI response would have some additional information in there telling me how, how many tokens I'm using. But I'm going to talk about that in this video. We're just going to move on. And instead, our very next thing we're going to talk about is how to templatize this. Because right now, among other things, I have this hard coded as 1980. What if I wanted to know what the top song was for a given year? Maybe 1981 or 1975 or what, you know, some other year. Well, to, to do that, we're going to make a, some subtle changes to this. I'm going to put in, first off, a path variable into the request, so top song for some year. I'm going to take as a parameter a int that's referencing that path variable for year. And now I'm going to change this prompt a little bit. I'm going to put it on another line so I don't have to scroll back and forth quite as much to see it. And I'm just going to go plug in, instead of the 1980, I'm going to plug in just a placeholder for year. Now at this point I need to somehow get that year plugged into that string because right now that string just has curly brace year and it. it doesn't have any year that's passed in from the from the API request. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a prompt template. There we go, prompt template. I'm going to pass in that prompt and from that prompt template I'm going to say okay template I'm going to say not, not with, I'm going to say add year and I'm basically giving it a value for what it's going to plug into there. In the end, that that whatever is passed in as the request, uh, the path variable on the request, that is going to be plugged into into this model, and that's going to be plugged into this before uh, we get a chance to ask the um, the LLM our question for generation. So you notice I'm passing in a single value here. This is an easy way to do it. You can also add a map. So if you have multiple values, you can either call template.add several times, or you can pass it a map with all of your values in it. Whichever one is uh, best is up to you. But for now, we need to do we do need to do one more thing because at this point, prompt is still this string. It doesn't have anything plugged into it yet. So I'm going to say okay, template dot render. Very good, and that's it. We are just we are now using a template to uh, fill in our prompt. And now that DevTools has restarted it, we're ready to kick, kick the tires on it again. Now this time, I can't simply say top song, I have to give it a year. So how about we go to the very next year, 1981. And we'll find out that the Billboard number one year end top 100 single for 1981 was Betty Davis Eyes by Kim Carnes. I gotta be honest, not one of my favorite songs. Uh, but oh well, I mean, uh, to each their own. If you like the song, good for you. It's not one of my favorites, but all right. That was the number one year in uh, one top 100 single for 1981. Let's try another year. How about we try 1989? And we're going to get that it was Look Away by Chicago. We could ask one more time just for grins and we could say maybe what was it for 2020? And we're going to find out, I already know the answer to this, we're going to find out it was Blinding Lights by the weekend. So there we go. We have now an API that's going to tell us what the number one was for any given year. Well, that's great, except that it's giving it to us as a string. Maybe we don't want that as a string. Maybe we want it as an object, some some domain object. So let's let's see how to do that. To do that, we're going to create a new, well, Java class. No, we're going to call this top song, but not a class. We're going to do a record. I mean, a class would also work, but might as well do a record. I mean, we are talking about songs, and albums are often called records. I mean, yeah, never mind that. All right, so we're going to have the song's title. We're going to have the artist. We're going to have what album it was on, and we're going to have whatever the year was. Okay? Those are the four things we're going to have in our top song record. Great. Now, let's go back over to our controller, and we're going to make a few changes here. First off, um, 
I'm going to start off by creating what's called a output parser. Now, there's a handful of output parsers that Spring AI comes with. There's some for dealing with lists, some for dealing with maps. I'm going to be dealing with just a simple bean output parser. And what bean output parsers do is they take and parse the what whatever comes back from the AI request from the generation. It's going to parse that into fields that can in properties that can go into a bean or in this case a record. So I'm going to say parser equal new bean output parser. I'm going to use top song. Now here's the thing though. You notice that when I ask it about a, a question about a top song, it came back as a sentence. How's it going to map that sentence, an English sentence, into properties in a bean? Well that's kind of a problem, isn't it? We need to tell it what format we expect it to come back in. And it is possible to add into our prompt some details and say, please bring this back as JSON output, here's the fields you should have on it and all that stuff. But there's a lot of stuff you have to do to tell it that. And I don't necessarily want to do that all the time. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this name here to uh, prompt string, just because I'm, I might reuse the word prompt a little bit later on. And I'm going to add, I'm going to also change it to a multi-line string because I just I just want to uh, say a lot. I have a lot to say in this this example. So I'm going to copy this out of here, get rid of the old double quotes, put that in there, and then on another line I'm just going to put in there the word format as, a, as another placeholder, as another part of my template placeholder. I'm going to put in the word format. So now we're still asking the same question. What was the billboard number one year in top 100 single for some given year? But we're also passing in whatever its format is. Now, as far as our, part of our uh, prompt template, I did change this from prompt to prompt string, so I need to do the same thing down there. I did add the year, that's good. I'm gonna say also add in something for format. Now, what, how do I know what the format is? Well, I could certainly dream up as part of this, and in, in these quotes say, give me JSON output, uh, here are the fields, uh, blah blah blah. I could do that, but that suddenly gets out of hand. That gets ugly. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to do something very clever that's, that Spring AI does. I'm going to ask the parser, hey, what output do you think there should be? And I'm going to say, get, get me the format string. And what's great about this is the bean output parser knows exactly what to say to tell OpenAI to give me this in a format that it can later use to parse the response into a top song. That's awesome. It's already built in, ready to roll. Very good. So now one other little thing is I need to say, okay, uh, template, you are going to use the output parser called parser. And what that's going to enable it to do is do all this magic that we're looking for here. Is It's going to give me that format, it's gonna give it back to me in JSON, not as, a, not as just string. And I'm gonna say, okay, prompt, prompt, this is where I'm going to have the new prompt variable, is going to be template.render, or t no, I'm sorry, template.create, that's not what I meant to do, template.create, there we go. And then I'm going to say, okay, uh, AI client, I want you to generate from that prompt, I'm going to assign that to the AI response. Now this is the object I talked about earlier where the AI response could contain additional information in it, but I'm just going to keep it as simple as that. In fact, I'm looking at this now, I'm not even sure why I even bothered with AI response, although I'm sure it's a fine choice here. Um, I could have just passed in a string here and got a string back, but that's not really what I wanted to do. Um, and I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to get the text out of it. So yeah, we are getting text. That's for sure. I'm going to get an AI response. Get text. That's going to still. I'm sorry, I, I did that wrong. I forgot to call generate. So get generation. Get text. There we go. And now that we have that text, what that what what's contained in that text? I'm not going to show it to you right now because well, I have to run it and put some debug in there. But I will tell you what it is. It's going to have in it essentially JSON, assuming that the get format that I gave in as the format to the prompt, is assuming that does its job, then this text, this string here, is going to just have a whole bunch of JSON in it. So I'm going to say, hey, parser, um, return instead of returning all that, I'm going to say uh, parser.parse, oops, helps if I can type, right? Parse text. And I don't need all that other stuff. I just simply need it to give me back 
whatever that is. Great. So what did I do wrong? I've got an error here. Uh, oh, I'm returning a string. It, yeah, I, I'm it, up here. I'm still returning a string. I'm not returning a top song, so we need to fix that. There we go. And now everybody's happy. Cool. So what we've done, just just a quick recap of all this code, is I've given it a B now put parser that knows how to deal with song, top song. I've given it the same prompt string I gave it before with a placeholder for year, but also a placeholder for format, which I populate by asking the parser to tell me what format it wants. In fact, just for grins, while we're here, let's go ahead and just sys out, sys out that, or I'll do a sys error because it, it stands out in, in red when I do that, that's going to have our format string of parser dot get format. That way you can kind of see what it, what it passes in as that prompt. All right, we'll see that in the in the output here in the console. But once we have that, then we go ahead and submit our prompt for generation. We get back an answer in text, but it's not necessarily human English text. It's JSON text, and we just ask our parser to turn it into an actual top song object that we return. Great, let's give that a shot and see what happens. Now, I don't have to restart it because DevTools has already restarted it. Let's come back over here, clear the screen so we can see the new stuff. Apparently it restarted again. I don't know what I did to, to cause that, but okay. Uh, then we're going to say, okay, what was the top song for 2020? And I'll show you what the output was here in a minute, or what the, the format was in a minute, but as you can see, we now got JSON back. We got an object of type top song that's giving us blinding lights by the weekend. It came from the album Blinding Lights, year 2020. Great. Let's try that again for 1981. We already seen the answer for 1981. We already know what the answer is. Uh, we're going to see that it was Betty Davis Eyes by Kim Carnes, but let's see it in JSON format. Oh, well, that was odd. It gave us physical by Olivia Newton-John. Now, here's an example. Even though I, before creating this video, I poked at this uh, dozens of times, and it gave back, frequently gave back, uh, Betty Davis Eyes, which is, in fact, the correct answer. This time it gave us physical by Olivia Newton-John, which is kind of peculiar to me that it gave me a different answer. Chances are good that my, my wording in my prompt, my, my choice of words here, left a little bit of ambiguity. So if I was a little bit more clear in my prompt, it might make it more clear that, no, I want that one. But regardless, we can try it again and just see if we get Betty Davis eyes. By the way, I'm not a huge fan of the, of the song Physical, but I do like it slightly better than Betty Davis eyes. There we go. It doesn't have an album name for some, some reason I don't know. It just didn't know it. Let's ask again for 1980. We know the answer for 1980. We've seen it before. I am hoping, sincerely hoping, it'll be consistent with what we saw before. It's Call Me by Blondie. Good job. It still didn't know the album name. That's peculiar to me, but that's okay. Uh, we won't worry about it right now. The fact that I got an object back with these, these answers in it is awesome for me. Let's try one more. We did 1989. I don't remember what we determined the answer was for that but we'll find out again. Faith by George Michael. I'm pretty sure that was, I'm sorry, no, Look Away by George Michael. I'm pretty sure that was not the answer we got before, but again, I probably need to do something with my prompt to make it a little bit more um, specific and a little less gen, um, amb ambiguous on what it's returning. So I don't know, maybe that'll improve it. Uh, speaking of which, there is an entire um, discipline forming around this for prompt engineering, where def defining the prompt clearly is is actually a skill to have that clearly and with the fewest amount of tokens um, and act so it gives an accurate and consistent answer uh, clearly not something I've employed in this example but it could be done now about that format what is it was that format look like so let's see there's, there's got a few of them here for this last one we we have your response should be in JSON format. Do not include any explanations. In other words, don't say, here is your JSON, followed by some JSON. Don't exclude ex explanations. Only provide RFC 8259 compliant JSON response following this format without deviation. In other words, don't go off and do your own thing here. Give me some JSON back. And by the way, here is the JSON schema that your output must adhere to. Uh, album, artist, title, year, all of type string. Great. And it determined that based on the fields that Top Song provides. So that it could later take that JSON that it gets back and bind it into that. So great. Now we've seen how this works. Let's do a little bit of recap.
In this video, we kick the tires on Spring AI, submitting simple prompts, templated prompts, and then we broke away from the string responses entirely by using an output parser to both alter the prompt with schema information and bind the response to a domain class. But there's a lot more that Spring AI can and will be able to do that we didn't cover, including Retrieval Augmented Generation, or RAG for short, provides additional information in the form of documents to the LLM that the LLM may not have been trained on. Because those documents may be large and therefore involve lots of tokens, which means they're going to cost you more, you could also use, with them, embeddings and vector stores. Basically, to pre-select relevant document snippets. Essentially, the documents are converted into vector data and stored in a vector database. Then, instead of sending all of your documents in a prompt, the vector databases search for similar and therefore likely relevant document snippets. This keeps the, the size of your prompt smaller and therefore keeps your costs smaller as well. We also didn't talk about functions. And that's because at the moment Spring AI doesn't support functions, but it likely will in the future. These enable an LLM to indirectly interact with one or more functions that you provide, that your application provides. These functions can provide additional structured data that can be used in generating responses or even functions that can trigger some behavior, such as maybe ordering a pizza or turning on a light or something like that. We didn't talk about chains. Uh, chains are a way to uh, string together several prompts, taking the results of one prompt and feeding it into the next prompt. And, and that works great. It's, it's fairly predefined what these chains are. You know what step one is, step two is, step three is. Fairly rigidly structured, but very valuable way to produce richer answers from a series of questions that are being asked. Now, if you want to do something a little bit more fancy, there's also the idea of agents. Agents offer functionalities similar to chains, but instead of strictly defining a set of steps, they allow for decisions to be made as to what the next step should be. Well, these are all great topics and things that Spring AI either already supports or will likely support in the future. And it'd make a great future video on more advanced Spring AI topics. But for now, thank you very much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned a little something from it. Here's where you can follow me on all the social medias. Here's where my books are. But if you don't remember anything else, remember to go to www.habuma.com. There you'll find information about my books, other videos that I've produced, all my social media contact information, and things like that. So, with that said, see you later. Thank you very much.